Are you a fan of Star Trek Axanar? Well, join me today as we print the Ares from Star Trek Axanar. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said, we are going to be printing the USS Ares from Star Trek Axanar's timeline. So this one is a really cool one because actually the Axanar channel reached out on my video about the Romulan Warbird and asked if I would print the ship. So here we are. I'm actually going, I, well, actually I printed it. But this was a really cool model and a really cool request from a really cool place. Because the Star Trek Axanar movie, even though it suffered a bunch of legal issues with Paramount, it is just what they made has so much awesome pretend potential to be something really cool that really looked like it fit in the ideals of Star Trek. And I really hope that it keeps going because, honestly, what they're doing is really awesome over there. And I felt really really honored to even be reached out and asked would you even print the ship um, by their channel so that uh, made a huge impact on me and so I got online and started looking around to see if there was a model that existed and luckily for us one did and then of course you know when I put in Kira we had to put our own spin into it and make it bigger and you know get the CR-10s involved because hey that's what they're for right so we're gonna get over and we're gonna get this guy sliced in Kira now, I did print this, all one print, one piece, not parts and pieces, but you can break it up using, me using mes mesh mixer and different tools to actually print this in pieces on smaller printers like the Ender 3 or the Prusa or any of those out there. Um, the model, you could even take this, shrink it down and throw it into a resin printer and get a really cool high detail model. For an FDM print, this one came out really high detail you guys will see that here further on when you really see, get a close-up look at the final product i have spray primered it white um just to kind of get started going down the line of actually painting it because i'm kind of want to paint this one and put it back up on the shelf as an actual model so we're going to hop over to the computer here in a second get cure going but if you guys enjoy the content on this channel please hit that subscribe button every subscription matters every person that joins us matters so if you hit that subscribe button Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. You guys are what make up the channel and even what we're printing. So I do appreciate that. If you have any questions about models, things in 3D printing, anything on the wall you see behind me or to the over here, <laughs> um, please leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to help you out with printing or anything like that if you're having problems. Um, just let me know and I'll be glad to help you out. So that's what the whole point of this channel is for, is to help you print and keep going. So, and of course, share. Um, that's the only way we get out there. The more views, the more likes, and all that kind of stuff really helps the channel get noticed, helps the algorithm, helps us grow and get out there. So, and um, if you're interested too, I do have a Patreon. Um, come over and go out there and support the channel. So, let's hop over to Kira and let's get this thing sliced and get to that time lapse. All right, here we are at the computer and the model that I chose to pull from Thingiverse is this one, Star Trek Ares Class 1 to 2000 by Outcast RC. This file was a dream to print. So a lot of times out here on Thingiverse, you may find the thing you're looking for, but the file may be, have bad manifolding, it may have bad meshing, there could be a lot of problems with it, it doesn't, doesn't allow it to print very well. Outcast RC, this model, just wow, it was clean, simple, Worked great, and I printed it first shot, no issues, no missing parts. Everything came out great, so thank you. I salute you for this model. Um, it is a wonder to print. So let's hop over to Cura, and here we are. It's loaded on the build plate, but you can see the insane amount of detail. The ship looks fantastic on here, but this is Rise of the Phoenix 3D. I mean, come on. We're 3D printing this. So what are we going to do? We're going to rotate it. We're going to stand her up. And we're going to turn her around because we want to make sure the camera view gets good. And we're going to bring that up to zero. But look at all that build space we got. So what are we going to do? We're going to bring her up. 300%. We're going to get this guy back on the build plate. Boom. Build plate. 
Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to print this big. Oh, uh, actually, I'm going to take I'm going to take it back a notch to 275. When you get up to this higher level, you get a, you can get a lot of wobble and stuff like that. I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to pull it back to 275, which is according to my notes here what I printed it at. So, but looking at this detail just in here, the detail is gorgeous. And there's a reason why I turned it upright. So when it comes to the connection points, they're all going to connect here, here, some connection point here and here, here and here. And the saucer and stuff should build free without much support. And it limits the amount of points that I have to clean from the support touching the model. So we'll hop over here. I'm going to use my CR10 custom profile. I'm going to use Inland PLA Plus to print this model. Um, I used gray this time, which I know is not a normal color you see me use on the channel, but I was working on another project and I needed to finish off the roll. So I went ahead and used gray, which honestly, when I primered this white and I do some more work on primering and getting this ready for paint, that gray is going to, if I do it right, that gray is going to give some awesome detail on the sections of the saucer section. So that's going to be an awesome bit for us. So... Let's go through here, infill density. This is gonna be a model. I'm not making this to be a toy. So I'm gonna cut that down to 5% to save on usage because we are gonna have quite a bit of support generated from this one. Now you can print it the other way, but the same problem occurs. Um, you're gonna have a lot of supports connecting here when really we don't need to. And I'm going to look at it here in a minute after we put in some support. I'm going to switch it back to normal, which is what I used. You can use tree. Um, this is Kira 4.8, by the way. So that is an option. Let's slice it and take a look at what these supports look like. So while we're slicing again, if you guys are enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button. Or if you got Kira questions or anything like that, let me know. I am exploring Simplified 3D as well. I did purchase it. So I'm trying to see if uh, it is way better than this. So we will kind of take a look. Let's preview this. I have my supports at 80% overhang angle, so it should give a generous amount of supporting. And it does. So and you're going to have a lot of support on the warp nacelle struts. There's not much you can do about that. You also need the supporting here. Now, <clears throat> it does a great job adding supports. Looking at this, though, and my phone goes off. I'm going to add some custom support here. Just to give this a bit more additional strength. So this guy is starting from nothing in midair. And these custom supports, I like them a lot. They break off relatively easy, not damaging the model. So um, you probably will, see, you guys probably do see me using this quite a bit. And just for security and stability, I'm going to pop one onto the bridge here. I'm going to turn around. I don't need one here. So that's just a little bit of extra support. Um, you can never have enough. You can always have way too much support in a model. So finding the best positions and finding the minimal support that you need is always a good way to go because that's less you've got to take off in the end. And taking this stuff off, it is easy to break a model. Um, one trick that I use, printer tip right here, uh, a lot of, oftentimes I'll put a model in the freezer for five or 10 minutes and let the PLA freeze. And it actually makes it pretty easy to snap them off cleanly. So keep that in mind, 214 grams. That's pretty good for this model. So let's take a look at it in preview so we can see all the supports before we send this over to the printer. So as you can see the custom supports I added in, it actually kind of reduced some of the supporting structure because we were at, I think 219 before. And we're going to give this a good structure to build on. So when we get up here and you start seeing this swirl in here, and if the printer kind of starts nudging it, we've got a good amount of connection to the bed. That's why I decided to print this on a raft instead of a brim or just trying to start it. I want that extra pull and support for a tower, for a high narrow object. Having that extra spread out can definitely be worth it. So let's get this thing over to the printer. I hope you guys enjoy the time lapse, and I'll see you on the other end of the final product.
That's what we've got. We've got the final model ready. I'm gonna really dig into some sanding, a little bit more cleanup, probably another coat of primer to get it more towards the white, get that off-white with some, uh, get that off-white look to get this going. The detail on this model was amazing, and the model maker, thank you. You made an awesome model out there for everybody to print out on Thingiverse. I suggest you go get the link. Um, if you have questions about, you know, slicing or you run into an issue please feel free to reach out to me in the comments down below but again Axonar channel i appreciate it there she is thank you guys and uh you know i'm really glad to be noticed by something that's really into the star trek universe so again if you like what you saw on the channel today hit that subscribe button hit that like button and of course share with all your friends so let's get this out there thank you guys we'll see you in the next video